Okay, we're going to talk about special right triangles, and uh, there are two special right triangles that you deal with, and really these special right triangles are a lot of the foundation for trigonometry. So it's really important you understand these um, different relationships within these triangles. And it's based off the Pythagorean theorem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, an isosceles right triangle, which would be a 45-45-90 triangle. Notice if your uh, base angles are congruent, then the opposite sides are also congruent sides opposite those angles are congruent. So I'm going to make this side equal x, which if this side is x, then the side that's congruent to it is also x. What I want to do is I want to find out what the length of the hypotenuse is in relation to those sides there. So uh, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to call the hypotenuse c. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And I know that a squared is x. Okay, so we have x squared plus b, which is also x, so that's x squared equals c squared. And therefore, x squared plus x squared is 2x squared, that's equal to c squared. And so to find the value of c, I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of 2x squared. So when I take the square root of c squared, I get c, the square root of 2x squared is root 2x squared. Remember, when you impose a root, you usually put plus and minus. It's positive and negative value. However, a negative value wouldn't make sense here because you have a length. Okay, so we're dealing with the principal root here. And so that's root 2 times root x squared, which is equal to c. And then square root of x squared is x. I have root 2 equals c. So c is equal to, I'm going to just rearrange this, x root 2. Okay. So c equals x root 2. So this side right here, x root 2. So the relationship for a 45, 45, 90, the legs are both x, the hypotenuse is x root 2. Now using that, what that means is I can tell one, if, as long as I have one side measure, I can find the other two. Versus like in a regular Pythagorean theorem where I'd have to have two side measures to find the third. Okay. So let's actually use that. Find the value of y, write your answer in simplest radical form. So note in this picture right here, ABC, um, what I really want to do is anytime I'm dealing with special right triangles, I'm going to draw that right triangle up there in that relationship. So there's a 45, or excuse me, a 90. Those are my 45s there. You could either just mark them with congruent angles because if this is 90, 90 has to be split in half here, so 45 and 45. That's x, that's x, that's x root 2. So the best way to do this, the best way, especially if you're struggling, is to take these measures and label your triangle with them. So note, each of my legs is x. So that's x, and that equals x. This side is x root 2. So notice I've made equations out of it. This side I don't have anything. CB I don't have anything that I can work with. But over here, I have x equals 7. And if x equals 7 and y equals x root 2, that means I can substitute that 7 in here, and I get y equals 7 root 2. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so if I know a leg, I can automatically find the hypotenuse. And in this next one, if I know the hypotenuse, I can find the leg as well. Okay, so once again, I'm going to label the pieces. So y equals x. This is x, which doesn't help us because there's nothing over here. But this is x root 2. So notice y equals x. I can't solve that equation, but I can solve this one. 7 equals x root 2. So if I'm solving for x, go ahead and write that. 7 equals x root 2. What I'm going to do is get x by itself. I'm going to divide both sides by root 2. So I get 7 over root 2 equals x. And then I can't leave my... Uh, radical in the denominator. I have to rationalize it. I have to get that out. And so the way we do that is we multiply by 1. But the form of 1 that we use is whatever that root is over itself. So this right here, root 2 divided by root 2 is 1. Okay. And I can multiply this side by 1 and I still get x. So it's not going to change the value of anything. Okay. But it does take the root out of the denominator, and I'll show you how. So 7 times root 2, we just write as 7 root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is root 4, and the root of 4 is 2. So when you multiply a root by itself, you get the thing inside the root. 
Notice, and I no longer have a radical in the denominator. So x is equal to 7 root 2, which means this side, y equals x, y equals x, y equals 7 root 2 over 2. Okay. Let's talk about another relationship. It's called the 30-60-90 uh, triangle. And 30-60-90 triangle, notice um, I put an extra point here, and I've done that to show that really a 30-60-90 triangle is just half of a 60-60-60 triangle, right? So this angle right here would be 30, so 60 for angle A, 60 for angle C, 60 for angle B. That's an isosceles, or excuse me, an equilateral triangle. Meaning all sides are equal, right? So if I were to say, hey, DB, this length from D to B measures X, well, that would mean from C to D would also be X. And that means this entire length has a length of 2x, which means this length over here, a to b, is 2x. Okay? And I'm going to erase some of this other stuff now and just kind of mark down what we have. We now have a relationship of x, 2x, and now we need to find this length. Okay? And we're going to call that letter b, or length b. And the way we're going to find it, Pythagorean theorem, it's a right triangle. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay? Well, a squared is x, or a is x, so x squared. b is still b squared. And c squared is 2x quantity squared. Okay? So this is x squared plus b squared equals that's 2 squared and x squared, so 4x squared. Okay. I'm going to subtract the x squared over and solve for b. So I have 1x squared minus, and I'm subtracting it from 4x squared, so that's going to be 3x squared is equal to b squared. And now I'm going to take the root. So b is equal to the square root of 3x squared. And remember, we just want the positive because it represents a length. So that means b is equal to root 3 times root x squared. The root of x squared is just x. Those cancel. So we get b is equal to x root 3. Okay? So this side right here, b, is x root 3. So my relationship for a 30, 60, 90, or, yeah, 30, 60, 90 is x, 1x, 2x, x root 3. I like to think of it as easy as 1, 2, and root 3. 1, 2, 3. Okay? All right, now don't confuse that with your 45, 45, 90. That's x, x, and x root 2. There's two x's and then a root 2, okay? All right, so if I'm using this, let's go ahead and try this. Here's a, here's a problem. Find the value of each variable. Write your answer in simplest radical. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that 30, 60, 90 relationship. It's really good, like if you're doing an exam or you're working with right triangles, just to write these relationships down, right? The shorter side, the one opposite the 30, is x. The longer side, um, the longest side, the hypotenuse, is our 2x. Remember, it's just an, an equilateral triangle, right? So if you can remember that, that's x, that's 2x. And then that other leg that you're dealing with was your x root 3. Right? 1, 2, 3. Okay? And so now we can label it over here. Um, the side opposite 90, or the side in between 30 and 90, is x root 3. 30 to 90, excuse me, 30 to 90 is x root 3. The side from 90 to 60, the side that connects 90 to 60 is x. 90 to 60, well isn't that convenient? It actually says x, so x equals x. And then the side from 30 to 60 is 2x. Okay, now the equation that I can solve here this doesn't help me yet, nor does this. But if 12 equals 2x, that means 1x equals 6. And if x equals 6, that means this side right here is 6. And if x is 6, we can plug 6 in right here, substitute it in, we get 6 root 3. And that's what y equals. So it really is just helpful to write down that relationship. All right, let's go ahead and move it around here. We have a different, we have two other ones actually. 
Okay, so we're going to go with this one, this triangle. So we have 60 to 30. Remember, 60 to 30, that's our 2x. Now, what I tell people in my class here is if you, anytime you have a variable and I get a situation where it says like x equals 2x or they use x and it, you don't get x equals x, then just kind of change this variable just for the sake of the problem. Let's call it a for what we're doing here, okay? Or better yet, since it's a hypotenuse, you can call it c. So c equals 2x, okay? And then from 30 to 90, 30 to 90, that's my x root 3. And then from 60 to 90, that's my x. Okay, so notice x equals 12. And if x is 12, well, that makes this easy. This is 12 root 3. So y equals 12 root 3. If y is 12 root 3, or excuse me, if x is 12, then this side is 2 times 12, which is 24. So c is 24, which, remember, c wasn't actually c, right? It was x to begin with. So if you're reporting this on your assignment, you'd want to say x equals 24, even though here we said it equals 12. But we're just using, we're using um, a different variable to help us not get confused with the two different x's. All right? So there's our two links, 24 and 12 root 3. Let's look at the last situation, okay? So once again, smallest side, shortest side from 90 to 60 is x. So that's good, x equals x. From 30 to 60 is 2x. And from 90 to 30 is x root 3. Okay? And so I can't solve this. I have an x and a y. I can't solve this because I don't have any numeric values, but I can solve 12 equals x root 3. And I'm going to solve that over here. 12 equals x root 3. Remember, if I'm trying to get x by itself, I'm going to divide by root 3. So I get 12 over root 3 equals x. Then need to rationalize and get that radical out of the denominator by multiplying by root 3 over root 3. So I get 12 root 3 times root 3 over root 3. Remember, that's like that special number 1 equals x. 12 times root 3 is 12 root 3. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. And then you've got to take this 12, 12 root 3. This is like a 12 thirds. 12 divided by 3 is actually 4, right? So this is actually 4. This is x. Let's write it over here. x equals 4 root 3. So that means right here we get x equals 4 root 3, which means that helps us out on the bottom there, right? It tells us actually that this side is 4 root 3. And if x is 4 root 3 and y is 2x, that means y is equal to 2 times x, which is 2 times 4 root 3s. Well, if you have 2 4 root 3s, that is 8 root 3. There we've got it. Okay, so really label them. Label them, label them, label them. The other caution, it only works with special right triangles. Not every triangle is special. So you have to, it actually has to be labeled as 30, 60, 90, 80, or 45, 45, 90. Okay. Let's do one last thing. Find the area of each triangle. So I'm given two triangles here. I'm given a 45, 45, 90, and a 60, um, 60, 60. Okay, well, the first one, if I'm finding the area, I guess the first thing we need to know, excuse me, is area is equal to 1 half base times height. Remember, when you're finding the area of a triangle, your base and height come together at a right angle, right? And so if I'm, if I'm thinking of this, is base and height, you have to have a right angle. That would be your height, this would be your base. Okay? And the hypotenuse doesn't matter. So in this picture, height, base. And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to solve for those. Well, we know in this relationship, in a 45, 45, 90, right, where that is congruent to that, this is x, this is x, this is x root. Two. Now, I'm, I'm pretty quick at that. I've done it a lot, but you look back to your notes, right? So this side is x root 2, and this is x, and this is x, 
Okay, so really these two measures are going to be the same. We should know that. It's an isosceles triangle. So this right here, 4 equals x root 2. Let's solve that real quick. So if I know 4 equals x root 2 and I want to solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides by root 2. So I get 4 divided by root 2 equals x. Then I'm going to multiply by that number 1 again, right? So x is going to be equal to 4 over root 2 times root 2 over root 2, right? That's that special number 1. Hopefully you start seeing that pattern, what happens there. So x is 4 times root 2 over 2. And that actually reduces. That becomes 1, and that becomes 2. So x is actually 2 root 2. So that means our base is equal to 2 root 2, and our height is equal to 2 root 2, which means if I'm calculating the area, my area is equal to 1 half the base times the height, so it's equal to 1 half 2 root 2 times 2 root 2. Well, those parentheses really don't mean anything other than I substitute something in. I can multiply in any order. So I'm just going to multiply numerics. 1 half times 2 is 1 times 2 is 2. And then root 2 times root 2 is root 4, which is also 2. So really I have 2 times 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. So my area is equal to 4 square units. All right, a bit different if you're dealing with the isosceles triangle or the equilateral triangle there. Notice it's a 60, 60, 60. I need to find the height. And so my height would be an altitude. Comes down. And notice when I have an altitude that comes down, I now have 60 and 90, which automatically means this angle up here has to be 30. Because that's all you have left out of 180 is in the triangle angle sum. So if I can find this length, my height, right? I already know the base of this triangle. The base has to be the entire base. So it's base times height times one half. Okay. And so one half, my base, which is 20, times, we need to fill in that height. Well, let's find the height. I'm going to draw a separate triangle down here. I have a 30, oops, I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay. Man, I'm having a hard time drawing there. There we go. Not an amazing triangle. Sorry. My hand's slipping there. But this is going to be x. This is going to be 2x. And this is x root 3. Now, if you want, you could um, draw your little triangle up here to remind yourself. There's 60. There's 90. There's 30. This is your 2x, this is your x, this is your x root 3 relationship. Okay, And so what I've got based on that up here, I know that x is half of that 20. So this length is 10. Right? And so if that's 10, this side, which we really don't care about, right, that's our hypotenuse, but if it makes you feel any better, that's 20. Okay? And this is 10 root 3. Okay, so my height is 10 root 3, which means I can plug that in right there. So I now have 1 half 20, which is 10, times 10, which is 100, times root 3. So my area is equal to 100 root 3 square units. Now I may ask you, like in an assignment, I may say round the nearest tenth, and you'd do that, but we're going to leave it like that for now. All right, well, that's all I got for you. Good luck.